Hello and a very warm welcome to you on what is a significant day for us at the Daily Service because it's exactly a year ago today, amazing it is to me, when we had our first Daily Service. We were being encouraged in Britain to stay at home and very hastily we arranged this and of course none of us thought for a moment that we'd be doing the same in a year's time and here we still are. And on your behalf I want to thank very much the army of people who put a huge amount of work behind the scenes into uh, all the admin and the tech related to this and of course the musicians and those who've led and thank you very much for watching some of you loyally watching all the way through perhaps you were there with us on the first of these daily services a whole year ago uh, you may be watching on your own and uh, as morning by morning I watch sometimes I watch on my own and yet I have a sense of a fellowship of people all around the city of Oxford throughout the UK and all over the world and I hope you've had a sense that you're not on your own but you're with a fellowship of people delighting to hear God's Word to sing his praises and to pray to him let me start with a prayer loving father it's been a long year but how we praise you for sustaining us for speaking to us for encouraging us we continue to look to you now. Please once again meet us through your word and encourage us that we might live better for you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, a year ago when we began, we looked at Psalm 23, I think, for our first three mornings, and we're going to read together Psalm 23 now. What an encouragement it is to know that the Lord is our shepherd together. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This week we're looking at the amazing servant song, the fourth of Isaiah's servant songs at the end of chapter 52. At the beginning of chapter 53 words that speak so clearly even though written and prophesied centuries before the coming of Christ they speak so clearly about his coming and especially about the final days of his life on earth I'm going to read verses 7 to 9 he was oppressed and afflicted yet he did not open his mouth he was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent so he did not open his mouth by oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Two clear themes emerge from those verses. The first, silent suffering. Verse 7 again. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. As we read those words, we're bound to think of the descriptions in the Gospels of the Lord Jesus approaching his death. In the Garden of Gethsemane, agonised spiritually, he nonetheless prayed, Father, not my will, but yours be done. And so he went to the cross. And we think of those terrible descriptions of his betrayal by one of his closest followers, his arrest, his trial, which followed no rules of justice. How the soldiers mocked him and rammed a crown of thorns on his head. How he was nailed to a cross. 
surrounded by a jeering crowd. And yet all along, he humbly submitted to his father's will. When he was on trial, Pilate commented, Why don't you say something? Peter, in his first letter, comments on those events like this. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. What a model he is for us. Have you been accused unjustly, treated unfairly? That's the experience of most of us at some stage in our lives. Perhaps it's what you're going through right now. And how tempting it is to want to retaliate and to respond in kind. But of course there is a, an appropriate response. It's not wrong to defend ourselves. We should take appropriate action in that kind of way. But never retaliate. Never respond in kind. And we should follow the example of the Lord Jesus. His chief concern was the honour and glory of his Father. And we should have as our greatest concern not defending our name and our reputation, but honouring God and being faithful to him and trusting him. There may well be injustice in this world, but let's trust ourselves as the Lord Jesus did to the one who judges justly. His judgment is the one that ultimately matters. His judgment is the one that lasts. That's the first theme silent suffering. The second, sinless sacrifice. Peter quotes from these verses in Isaiah, again in his first letter. Speaking about the Lord Jesus, he says, he committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. Maybe you've spent quite a lot of time in close proximity with others over the last few months. I wonder if any of them could say, oh, she never did anything wrong. She's perfect. I never heard anything wrong coming out of her mouth. I don't think any family member would say that of us. I don't think any friend would say that of us. Certainly wouldn't of me. But here was the Apostle Peter, who had spent three years very closely with the Lord Jesus, and he was able to say he never did anything wrong. He's the one person who ever lived who didn't deserve to be cut off from his Heavenly Father and face that separation which is the penalty for sin. And yet on the cross, he stood in for others and faced that punishment that he didn't deserve. And Isaiah prophesies about it again. He says, end of verse 8, He was cut off from the land of the living for the transgression of my people. He was punished. Not for his own sin, but punished in the place of others. How we praise him. And it's right now as we turn to pray, to begin with a prayer of confession, as we remember that he died for our sin. So together, let's say these words of confession. Lord, we have sinned. We have turned away from you and disobeyed you. We lift up our voice to you and cry for your mercy. There is no one else to whom we can go. Please save us from our sins and from the temptations that seem too strong for us. Please forgive us, as you have promised through Jesus' death on the cross, and help us to praise you as we should, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peter writes, You know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Father, we praise you for the willing suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was without sin. And we praise that he was prepared to take upon himself our sin and its penalty, that we can be forgiven. Keep us trusting in him and always grateful. Amen. We've been thinking of the sufferings of Christ. Let's begin by praying now for the persecuted church. Almighty God, you have called your people to shine as lights in the world. 
We pray for our fellow Christians who bear their witness in difficult places and for those who suffer persecution and imprisonment for the gospel's sake. Uphold their faith. Bless their testimony. Give them freedom of spirit and cause your word everywhere to speed on and triumph for the honour of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's be thinking in our hearts of those who we know who are suffering especially at the moment. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, look, we pray, with pity on the pains of all your children and grant that the death of Christ and his infinite love may make fruitful for good all the hardships we experience and especially the tribulations of the innocent and the sufferings of the sick and bereaved. Through him who suffered in our flesh and died for our sake, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. When we suffer and when we pray for those who suffer, we can be sure that Jesus understands. He is the man of sorrows and we're going to sing about him now. Well, as always, it's been really good to have you with us. May the Lord bless you and keep you 
this coming day. Let's close by saying the words of the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.